Hello, hello one and all and welcome to Noob Reviews. Today we will be reviewing Ancestors Legacy. I don't want to keep you too long so let's jump straight into this. Ancestors Legacy is a squad based real time strategy with a strong focus on tactics. Inspired by medieval European history, it brings to life four different nations and their conflicts, usually solved by war. The game was released on PC in May 2018, Xbox One and PlayStation 4 in August 2019, and Switch in June this year. It was developed by the Polish studio Destructive Creations and published by 1C Company. Taking the role as either the Vikings, Anglo-Saxons, Teutons or Slavs, players take to the battlefield in both single player and multiplayer modes as you utilise a range of units, heroes and defensive tactics, such as setting up camps and traps to take on a series of challenges and foes. With not only death at the point of a blade to worry about, you must also fight off starvation, work to stop units abandoning their posts if they have a lack of faith in you, and managing resources for building traps, upgrading camps, and working on strengthening and reinforcing your army. Reinforcing your army can be done in a variety of ways, such as merely bolstering numbers through to carrying out research on stronger armour and weapons, and investing in new training techniques such as suppressive fire for your archers, and forming shield walls for your shield bearers. Having had a look at sites like How Long To Be and other game completionist websites, it would be safe to say there is about a good 24 to 30 hours of content, depending on your playstyle. There are a total of four campaigns, with each having two leaders to play as and roughly six missions per leader, meaning a whopping 48 missions. Admittedly, though, I have not finished all of the campaigns yet, so there could be even more. There are two multiplayer modes called Domination and Annihilation that sees players thrown into battle against one another with up to 10 squads of units at any one time. Depending on how bloodthirsty or diplomatic you're feeling, there are 1v1, 2v2 and 3v3 modes, meaning up to 6 players can throw down against one another. To make sure there is enough space to accommodate the anarchy, there are 15 maps of various sizes on which to deploy and fight your troops. Although the game offers quite an in-depth tutorial, I find that the selection of multiple units using the controller to be really hit and miss. When it works, you simply double tap X to have multiple units under your control at once. But A, it will intermittently not work until the third or fourth attempt, and B, you can only select a multiple of the same unit type, for example, archers, cavalry or melee, not mixes. I'm not sure how the PC version handles, but I would imagine the mouse would make it a lot easier to just drag and select multiple units at once. So it may just be a minor drawback on the consoles or using a controller. The game has a fantastic soundtrack that really puts you in the mood from the start screen and helps to set the atmosphere for the mission and multiplayer matches. The game has a brilliant art style that really delivers the overall intro, faction intros and mission briefs well. With many of the factions there are different sides to the story you can play through such as a warrior and a clan leader's point of view. This allows you to experience multiple points of view for what may be different sides of the same event. The sheer size and scope of the campaigns offers you a lot of variety in tactical options. The Spike Trap 100% needs its own mention. 100% need to mention the Spike Trap purely because if you get a few of these bad boys set up, you can literally create a meat grinder to lure your enemies into. And I'm not going to lie, it's beautiful. There are only a handful of units to use across the various factions compared to many other historical and non-historical real-time strategy games. Personally, I thought there was enough variety to keep the units interesting, but not everyone may feel the same. At times it can be fiddly, especially on the console version, to select and deploy more than one squad of units at a time. In the heat of battle, this can be the difference between the win or loss of a skirmish. 
Even when completing specific goals like rushing and disabling a catapult crew for example, be aware that certain weapons like catapults will keep attacking your ships and troops until you have made it right to the end of a gauntlet and completed an overall or final objective. Personally I thought this was a glitch at first but it has been confirmed to happen regularly across all platforms. I found this more frustrating than anything and it did not always occur after a reload. Bar the usual manual on the initial settings and options menu, there is no in-game manual for you to refer to so make sure to play through the tutorial and keep referring back to said manual if you need to. There are a few historical inaccuracies in the game where if you are a huge history buff you may find them niggling away at the back of your mind. Although this doesn't really subtract from the overall experience it has led to many a poor review and depending on your love of accuracy may grind your gears too. However, one thing I would like to request is just remember and look back at all the historically accurate video games and just how many of them have actually been 100% accurate. With an average asking price of £30 which is around $40 I think the game is a little overpriced for what it offers and personally I think it would be better priced around the 15 to 20 pound mark. However, if you are a fan of real time strategy games and the price is not an issue, I would highly recommend you give Ancestors Legacy a playthrough. At the end of the day, all I can really do is provide my personal point of view and encourage you to try the game for yourself, to form your own opinions. Some may love it whilst others might not. For now though, whatever you decide to play, I wish you happy gaming and have a fantastic day.